Alright, so if right now you look like a pepperoni pizza, like you're about to terrorize Gotham City, you wanna know how I got these scars? Don't worry, because I'm about to teach not only how to get clear skin, but how to heal any acne scars or blemishes and become one step closer to becoming a sexy mofo. First of all, you need to understand that there are three main skin categories which you may fall under, starting with dry skin. Now, dry skin underproduces sebum, which for all you non scientific peasants is the natural oil produced by your skin, preventing moisture from evaporating from your skin and into the air, meaning your skin's going to be drier than Africa during a water famine. You'll most likely experience some form of flaking and irritation, which is why it's important to use facial oils such as jojoba or bio oil on top of your daily routine. And most importantly, be gentle on your skin. It's been through enough. Alternatively, you may have oily skin, which is essentially the opposite of dry skin, and will overproduce sebum, which is also the main fuel source for the bacteria which causes acne. Yeah, fuck those guys. Be aware though that in many cases, people with dry skin often think they have oily skin, and this is because they're retarded. I'm just kidding. Although this may be the case, it's generally as a result of dry skin overcompensating the production of oils to counter the dryness. If you do have oily skin, however, these are a few things you want to keep in mind when it comes to looking after your skin. The category which I myself fall under is combination skin, meaning whilst my forehead is oily, my chin and jawline are usually drier than a nun's sense of humour. Although where your skin is oily and where it's dry depends on you as a person, because after all every one of us is a special snowflake. Just some are more special than others. And finally, we have normal skin. Personally, I find the idea that there is a normal skin type to be incredibly skin phobic and downright discriminatory. But regardless, if you find your skin having to never feel tight or greasy, doesn't flake off or get shiny by the end of the day unlike the rest of us subhumans, then congratulations because you have won the genetic lottery and I'm not jealous at all. You probably don't ever concern yourself with us peasants or need to give a shit about the causes of acne which is essentially a result of the subosseous gland and hair follicle complex becoming obstructed. In short, dead skin cells, not to be confused with dead in cells, and oil will clog the pores manifesting in these various acne signs and symptoms. And whilst there are factors which you can't do much about, such as your hormonal profile resulting in excess androgens during puberty, certain medications and the size of your pores, I looks max and going to take you through my guide to clear skin, which I totally didn't rip from reddit or anything. I don't know why I said that so sarcastically, I actually put a lot of time and effort into this. So without further ado, the 5 pillars of a good skincare regimen are Cleansing Exfoliation Spot Treatment Moisturizing And Sun Cream Beginning with Cleansing If you're a girl, the first thing you want to do is clear off any makeup you may be wearing. You can be a guy and wear makeup too, I don't judge. I'm not homophobic. I'm not scared of you. Next, you want to use the right cleanser for your skin type. For dry skin, formulas with cream and oil will be better suited to maintain moisture in the skin. It may also be best to limit your facial cleansers to once a day, and before using a new product, you want to do a patch test by applying the product under your chin, or behind the ear if that floats your boat, for a couple of weeks to see how your body reacts. Generally, you'll want to experiment with gel or milk-based cleansers, and heck, if you can't find anything that helps your skin, you can simply use water. So yes, it does count as washing your face when the bullies push your head down the toilet in school. It may also help to invest in a humidifier, which adds moisture to the air, preventing dryness which can inflame the skin. What won't help, however, is using a cleanser which is overly soluble in water, as this will simply remove what little sebum your face produces, which would be like robbing a homeless guy. I actually made this mistake recently. Turns out homeless people do freeze to death if they can't afford the hostel. On the other hand, a highly water soluble cleanser is exactly the kind you'll want to use if you have oily skin. However, if it's leaving your skin feeling overly tight or looking shiny, stop, you're damaging your skin. When it comes to actually washing your face, it's best to use lukewarm water as hot water will only produce water loss from the skin and you should keep cleansing short to not strip away the natural oils of the skin. Exfoliation. Now sometimes in life it's best to shed away with the shit and give way to a better, prosperous future. Which is exactly why you should be exfoliating your skin once two times a week for a healthier glow. Many people will recommend you physical exfoliation, and whilst it is a choice, it's the wrong choice. 
Let's face it, most people don't know what the fuck they're doing, and so adding in variables such as scrubbing speed and power is simply too much to handle. Me personally, there is nothing I love more than doing acid, exfoliants, primarily glycolic and lactic acid. If you're just starting out, a gentle milk-based exfoliant like lactic acid is the best place to start. An alternative if you're vegan is to unsubscribe because who gives a shit about making the world a better place if it impedes upon your looks maxing progress? Now, in all seriousness, you can use almond-based exfoliants like mandelic acid, which I also recommend to those with the most sensitive skin. On the other end of the spectrum, you have glycolic acid, derivative, der deriving from sugar. Fuck me, I'm HB on the spectrum myself. <laughs> These free exfoliants are known as alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs for short. And whilst they do this, they also do this, which is why it's extra important to wear sun cream when using them. You may otherwise choose to use beta hydroxy acids, you know, fucking beta, which is specifically efficient at treating blackheads and they're pretty good at treating oily skin. I personally don't like using BHAs because I don't think it's best for my skin type, and it's not because I'm insecure about associating with anything beta or whatever. If you're feeling extra juicy, substitute this stage for derma stamping once a week till any acne scars and blemishes. I personally use Dr. Pen Derma Pen, although a better and more expensive option for you kids who fancy a spend up on daddy's credit card is the Derminator 2. There is an awful lot of shit floating around on the internet regarding derma stamping, so to save time I'll simply link a video which I think covers it well in the description. Spot Treatment now let's be real here, you don't really need to do anything for this stage, but if you've got that one little bastard that just won't go away, it may help to use one of the following products. But heck, I'm not even going to try and pretend like I can pronounce them, so here they are on the screen. If I ever feel like going a little try hard, I just chuck a clay mask on once a week, job done. Moisturising. I'm not going to overcomplicate this, there really isn't much to it, and I'm not just saying that because it's 12.30am and I really need to go to bed, my ego is keeping me from doing that until the vid is finished. I'm growing delirious guys, please help save my suffering by clicking subscribe right now. If you have dry skin, it may help to use more emollients and occlusive ingredients which will boost the production of oils present to block water evaporation. Just don't be too occlusive as this will simply block water absorption from the air. For oily skin, water-based moisturizers with humectants may be best. I'm gonna be real with you for a second, I have no idea what any of this scientific mumbo jumbo means. But here's a table of examples for all of this stuff. And finally, we have sun cream. Follow all of these steps and you'll be well on your way to becoming a sexy mofo. Or at least, a sexier version of you. Guaranteed 100% of the time. But I still have acne. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to say that if you're going through puberty and getting bullied for your skin, man, fuck those dudes. When I was younger, petty names like Freddy Krueger and pathetic acting boy who should just kill himself were commonplace for me. Admittedly, it's because I was the one saying it to those spotty little twats. <laughs> now those were the days. But the point still stands. This has been your boy Lux Max's guide to clear skin. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, the blood, help me, please.